The musty scent of ancient parchment filled Samantha Ray's nostrils as she carefully unfurled the brittle map, its edges crumbling beneath her fingers. In the flickering light of her kerosene lantern, the faded ink lines seemed to dance, conjuring visions of a city lost to time and shrouded in shadow. Excitement thrummed through Samantha's veins, warring with an undercurrent of trepidation. This map, recovered from a shipwrecked Portuguese galleon, was the key to unlocking her life's obsession. The legendary El Dorado, City of Gold. A place that had consumed the dreams of countless conquistadors and claimed the lives of a hundred expeditions. But for Samantha, it represented more than wealth or glory. It was a connection to her late father, the renowned archaeologist Dr. James Ray, who had perished in the Amazon while searching for that very city. A way to fulfill his legacy and lay his restless spirit to rest. Her fingers traced the path of the Amazon, inked in faded crimson like a river of blood, to where it terminated at a cluster of toothy peaks deep in the uncharted jungle. There, marked by a coiled serpent, was the lost city, El Dorado. A chill raced down her spine. Behind her, the floorboards of her study creaked. Samantha spun, heart in her throat, to see a figure emerge from the shadows. A woman, her severe beauty untouched by age, regarded Samantha with eyes pale as frost. Hello, Samantha. Victoria. Dot. Samantha's voice was brittle with barely contained hostility. What an unexpected surprise. Her stepmother, Victoria Blackwood, smiled thinly, moving to pour herself a snifter of brandy from the cut crystal decanter on the sidebar. You left the gala so abruptly. I was concerned. Samantha didn't bother to hide her scoff. Concern, right? More like making sure Samantha hadn't slipped her gilded leash. Ever since her father's death, Victoria had fought tooth and nail to control his company, his estate, and Samantha herself, all in the name of preserving his legacy a legacy she knew nothing about. I had more important things to attend to than hobnobbing with your sycophants. Samantha turned back to the map, an obvious dismissal. The click of Victoria's heels on the hardwood floor heralded her approach. Careful, darling. Bitterness is so unbecoming on a young woman. She came to stand at Samantha's shoulder, sharp gaze zeroing in on the unfurled map. Another of your father's little passion projects, I take it? Samantha gritted her teeth. This map is the key to finding El Dorado. I'm mounting an expedition to El. Absolutely not. Victoria's voice lashed like a whip. I won't have you traipsing off to the Amazon to chase fairy tales. You have a company to run. My father's company, Samantha snapped. And his work? Work. Was the death of him? Victoria hissed, pale eyes flashing. Along with that native whore? Rage exploded in Samantha's chest. Before she could think, she slapped Victoria hard across the face, leaving a livid red mark on her cold, perfect cheek. Silence stretched between them, taut as a bowstring. Victoria lifted a hand to her cheek, expression unreadable. Then, slowly, she smiled. A terrible, razor-edged thing. Oh, uh, Samantha, you have no idea what you've just unleashed. With that, she turned on her heel and stalked from the room, leaving Samantha trembling with anger and sick foreboding. The map crinkled in her white-knuckled grip. El Dorado, her father's dream, his dying obsession, laid before her. The culmination of everything she'd worked for, bled for. The jungle waited, shadows and secrets, and the whispered promise of closure. Damn Victoria. Damn her games, her cold cruelty her grasping need for control. This was Samantha's birthright. Her destiny. She'd walk into the very heart of darkness to claim it, even if it killed her. With grim resolve, Samantha rolled up the map, tucked it into her satchel and marched out into the night, never seeing the shadow that watched her go with vengeful, covetous eyes. The Amazon jungle closed around Samantha like a fist, humid and oppressive, as she hacked through the dense foliage with a machete. Sweat plastered her khaki shirt to her back, and damp tendrils of auburn hair clung to her forehead beneath her wide-brimmed hat. Three days. That's how long they'd been forging up the Rio Negro, 
deep into the untamed heart of the rainforest. Three days since she'd left Rio de Janeiro with her assembled team, racing against Victoria's treachery and the onset of the savage wet season. Samantha paused to consult the ancient map, now safely encased in a waterproof sleeve. According to her calculations, they were close. The lost city, the key to her father's legacy, waited just beyond the curtain of green, shimmering like a mirage. A sudden crack of a branch snapping underfoot made Samantha spin, machete raised. But it was just her guide emerging from the trees, his tall, lean frame moving with the preternatural grace of a jaguar. We should make camp soon, Alejandro said, his voice a smooth Rio accent. The light is fading. Samantha couldn't help but let her gaze linger on the way his sweat-dampened shirt clung to the planes of his chest, the corded muscles of his forearms. With his high cheekbones, gleaming obsidian eyes, and thick black hair pulled back from a face that could have been carved by the Aztec gods themselves, Alejandro Rojas looked like something out of the jungle's most fevered dreams. Dreams Samantha knew better than to indulge. She'd learned the hard way that men, especially dangerously handsome ones with shadowed pasts, were nothing but distractions from her true purpose. Still, she'd be lying if she said she hadn't felt the whisper of attraction from the moment he'd walked into a Rio hotel room, all coiled power and watchful intensity. The way his gaze had raked over her, glinting with unspoken challenge, and something darker, more primal. She shook off the thought, focusing on the map. We're close. I can feel it. Just a few more miles, well. The jungle is not a place to be trifled with, Dr. Ray. His voice held a note of warning. Especially not with night closing in. Frustration itched beneath her skin, warring with grudging acknowledgement. As much as she hated to admit it, he was right. The jungle was a living, breathing thing, with dangers lurking in every shadow. To push on now would be reckless. Fine, she relented, sliding the map back into her pack. We'll make camp. But at first light light. We forge on, he finished, a ghost of a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. You are your father's daughter, Samantha Ray. Stubborn to the bone. An ache lanced through her chest at the mention of her father. You knew him? Something flickered in Alejandro's dark eyes, there and gone too quickly to decipher. By reputation only. He was a legend among my people. A man of great courage and vision. He was the best of men, Samantha said softly, throat suddenly tight. And I won't let his death be in vain. Alejandro regarded her for a long moment, unreadable. Then he reached out, his calloused fingers brushing her cheek in a touch that sent electricity racing down her spine. Neither will I. The moment stretched between them, taut with unspoken things. Things Samantha had no business feeling. Not here, not with so much at stake. She stepped back, breaking the contact, and busied herself with unshouldering her pack. They made camp in a small clearing, stringing hammocks between the trees, and building a fire to ward off the gathering dark. As Samantha sat cross-legged on her bedroll, poring over her father's old field journals by the flickering light, a sudden commotion outside the circle of firelight made her head snap up. Alejandro was on his feet in an instant, a wicked-looking knife appearing in his hand as if by magic. He melted into the shadows at the edge of the clearing, body coiled with lethal tension. Heart-pounding, Samantha reached for her pistol. The jungle had gone preternaturally still, as if holding its breath. Then, from the darkness, came a low, guttural growl that raised the hairs on the back of her neck. Alejandro swore viciously in Spanish. Jaguar dot. Terror seized Samantha's throat. There was a reason the indigenous tribes revered the jaguar as an avatar of death itself. Cunning, powerful, and utterly ruthless, they were the apex predators of the Amazon. She thumbed back the hammer of her pistol, mouth gone desert dry. In the darkness, beyond the feeble circle of firelight, luminous eyes flashed. The growl sounded again, vibrating through the earth, through her bones. Alejandro shifted, placing his body between her and the unseen threat. Samantha opened her mouth to protest, but the words died on her tongue as he shot her a look over his shoulder. 
A look that said, unequivocally, I will protect you. And God help her, some treacherous part wanted to let him. Wanted those strong arms, that coiled power, that unwavering intensity, all focused on keeping her safe. But she was Samantha Ray. She didn't need protecting. Not from the jungle, not from her demons, and certainly not from the traitorous yearnings of her own heart. Stealing herself, she rose to her feet and stepped up to Alejandro's side, pistol held rock steady before her. His eyes met hers, glinting with surprise and something perilously close to approval. The jaguar snarled, a lash of sound in the darkness. Samantha gritted her teeth, finger tightening on the trigger. The jungle held its breath. Her blood roared in her ears. Then, as suddenly as it had come, the jaguar melted back into the shadows, the fading whisper of a growl trailing in its wake. Samantha let out a shuddering breath, lowering her pistol. Beside her, Alejandro relaxed fractionally, sliding his knife back into its sheath at his belt. It's gone, he murmured. For now. But the unspoken weight of his words hung in the air. The danger was far from over. They were trespassers here, in the jaguar's domain. In El Dorado's domain, ding dee. And the jungle guarded its secrets jealously. As if in confirmation, a sudden rustle of wings sounded overhead. Samantha glanced up to see a pair of toucans take flight from a nearby tree, their garish bills flashing in the firelight. Beside them, snagged on a gnarled branch, something else fluttered. Something that glinted a familiar, chilling silver in the dancing flames. Samantha reached out with a trembling hand to snag it. A scrap of silk, torn and stained. Embroidered with an all-too-familiar crest. Victoria. Howl. Icy foreboding dripped down Samantha's spine. Her stepmother was here, in the jungle. Hunting the same prize. But how? How had she known? How had she followed? Unless... Samantha turned to look at Alejandro. Really look at him. At the inscrutable shadows in his eyes, the coiled tension in his powerful frame. The secrets etched into every line of that striking, dangerous face. Her father used to say the jungle yielded nothing without demanding its pound of flesh. Not treasure, not glory, not even love. Staring into the eyes of the man she'd entrusted with her mission? Her father's legacy. Her own traitorous heart, Samantha felt the first cold bite of doubt sink its teeth deep. What price would the jungle demand of her before the lost city gave up its secrets? And would it be a price she was willing to pay? The trek through the jungle grew more arduous with each passing mile. The ancient map led them deeper into the wilderness, far from any trace of civilization. With each step, the air grew heavier, the shadows darker the secrets more closely guarded. Samantha could feel the weight of the unknown pressing down on her, as tangible as the humidity that clung to her skin. The scrap of Victoria's silk burned in her pocket, a taunting reminder of the treachery that lurked in the green labyrinth. And then there was Alejandro. Since the jaguar's appearance, a subtle tension had stretched between them. His dark gaze followed her movements, intense and searching, as if trying to unravel the mystery that was Samantha Ray. She could feel it like a physical touch, raising goosebumps on her skin despite the sweltering heat. But there were secrets in those eyes, too. Secrets that set her instincts on edge and her heart racing in a way that had nothing to do with the exertion of the height. Who was Alejandro Rojas, really? The skilled guide with an uncanny knowledge of the jungle's ways? The dangerous man with a past as shadowed as the rainforest itself? Or something else entirely? Samantha shook off the thought, focusing on the task at hand. The lost city was close. She could feel it in her bones. Every fiber of her being strained towards it, towards the answers it held. Answers about her father, about the obsession that had consumed him, about the woman he had loved, the native whore Victoria had so cruelly disparaged. Samantha's jaw clenched at the memory. Her father had been a man of integrity, of deep passion for his work and the cultures he studied. The idea that he would have had an illicit affair, that he would have betrayed her mother. No, there had to be more to the story. And El Dorado held the key. 
as if sensing her thoughts, Alejandro fell into step beside her. We're getting close, he murmured, his deep voice sending shivers down her spine despite the heat. The city is near. Samantha shot him a sidelong glance. How can you be sure? The map doesn't give exact coordinates, just landmarks and riddles. A ghost of a smile played at the corners of his mouth. The jungle speaks to those who know how to listen. As if to illustrate his point, he suddenly froze, head cocked. Samantha strained her ears but heard nothing beyond the endless symphony of birdsong and insect chatter. Then, on the very edge of perception, a low rumble. Like distant thunder, but with a rhythmic cadence that raised the hairs on the back of her neck. Drums. Alejandro's hand closed around her wrist, Kaliu's fingers pressing into her racing pulse. We're not alone. Even as he spoke, the jungle erupted around them. Dark shapes melted out of the shadows, lithe and lethal. Native warriors, their bare chests gleaming with sweat and paint, bows drawn taut and spears leveled. Samantha's hand flew to her pistol, but Alejandro's grip stopped her. No, he hissed. We're outnumbered. Don't provoke them. The warriors closed in, hard eyes glinting with suspicion and hostility. One stepped forward. A towering man with a jaguar pelt draped over his shoulders. The chief, Samantha guessed, based on the deference the others showed him. He spoke in a rapid dialect, the words flowing over Samantha like the river. Beside her, Alejandro answered in kind, his tone low and respectful. The chief's gaze flicked to Samantha, then back to Alejandro. A moment of tense silence stretched, broken only by the distant throb of the drums. Then, slowly, the chief lowered his spear. He gestured to the warriors who reluctantly stood down, melting back into the jungle as silently as they had come. Alejandro let out a slow breath, his grip on Samantha's wrist easing. We're safe, for now. But we must tread carefully. The tribes guard the lost city, fiercely. Samantha's heart pounded against her ribs. What did you say to him? Alejandro hesitated, something unreadable flickering in his dark eyes. I told him we seek the truth, not treasure. That we come in peace. Samantha searched his face, trying to read between the lines. And he believed you. He believes I am a man of my word. Alejandro's jaw tightened. I only hope I can live up to that faith. Before Samantha could press further, a sudden cry echoed through the trees. A cry of pain, of fear, in a voice that sent ice water flooding Samantha's veins. Victoria. Samantha lunged forward, breaking Alejandro's grip. She crashed through the underbrush, heedless of the thorns that tore at her clothes, the branches that lashed her face. She burst into a small clearing and stumbled to a halt, chest heaving. There, sprawled in the center of the trampled grass, was Victoria. But not the sleek, composed Victoria of Samantha's memory. This Victoria was bedraggled, her once pristine khaki torn and muddied, and the front of her shirt was soaked in blood. Victoria! Samantha dropped to her knees beside her stepmother, hands shaking as she tried to assess the damage. What happened? How did you... The map, Dottie. Victoria's voice was thready, her perfect porcelain complexion gone ashy. He betrayed me for the map. Coldness settled in Samantha's gut. Who? Victoria's eyes, once so sharp and calculating, were clouded with pain and something eerily like fear as they met Samantha's. Him, she whispered. The anaconda. Even as the last word shuddered past her bloodied lips, a shadow fell over them. Samantha looked up, and her blood turned to ice in her veins. A man stood at the edge of the clearing, tall and broad, with a face that might have been hewn from the same stone as the lost city itself. Eyes the palest, most merciless blue Samantha had ever seen stared out of that hard, unforgiving face. Eyes that glittered with triumph and a cold, vicious glee as they fixed on Samantha. Hello, Samantha, he said, his voice the low hiss of a serpent. I've been waiting for you. And there, clutched in his fist, was the ancient map, 
stained with Victoria Blackwood's blood. The man stepped into the clearing, his movements as smooth and sinuous as the serpent he was named for. The Anaconda. The name sent a chill slithering down Samantha's spine. She rose slowly to her feet, placing herself between the predator and his wounded prey. Victoria lay behind her, broken and bleeding, but Samantha's focus was locked on the icy eyes boring into hers. Who are you? She demanded, proud of the way her voice remained steady. What do you want? The anaconda smiled, a chilling curve of his lips that held no warmth. I want what you want, Samantha Ray. The lost city. The treasure of El Dorado. His gaze flicked to the ancient map, crumpled in his fist. And thanks to your dear stepmother, I now have the means to claim it. Fury ignited in Samantha's veins, burning away the fear. The map is useless without the key to decipher it. And that key died with my father. It was a bluff. But she held the anaconda's gaze unflinchingly. The key was her. The map inked in riddles and codes that only a ray could unravel. A birthright passed from father to daughter. But the anaconda merely chuckled, the sound as dark and rich as the soil beneath their feet. Dr. James Ray took many secrets to his grave, it's true. But not all. He reached into his shirt and withdrew a leather cord. Dangling from the end, glinting in the filtered sunlight, was an amulet. An amulet in the shape of a coiled serpent, the twin to the one Samantha's father had always worn. The amulet that had been buried with him. By a rose in Samantha's throat, Duff, you desecrated his grave. A small price to pay for the treasure of a lifetime. The anaconda's eyes glittered with a fanatic light. Your father was a fool, Samantha. He had the key to untold riches, to power beyond imagining, and he squandered it on sentiment. On love for a jungle whore and the bastard child she bore him. The world tilted beneath Samantha's feet. Bastard child? Her father's child? It couldn't be. It was a lie, a cruel taunt designed to throw her off balance. But some distant part of her some deep buried instinct, whispered that it was true. She shook her head, pushing the thought away. It didn't matter, not now. All that mattered was stopping the anaconda from claiming the city and its secrets. My father, she said, her voice low and fierce, was twice the man you'll ever be. The anaconda's smile sharpened, turned vicious. We'll see about that. He raised his hand, and the jungle erupted around them. Men melted out of the shadows, hard-eyed and heavily armed. Mercenaries, their loyalty bought with blood money and the promise of gold. Samantha reached for her pistol, but it was too late. The anaconda's men were on her in an instant, wrenching her arms behind her back, the muzzle of a gun cold against her temple. The anaconda stepped closer, his breath hot against her cheek. The lost city will be mine, Samantha Ray and you will be the one to lead me to it. From the corner of her eye, Samantha saw Alejandro edge forward, his hand drifting towards the knife at his belt. The anaconda saw it too. Ah, ah. He pressed the gun harder against Samantha's head, making her wince. Let's not do anything foolish, guide. You've served your purpose. The girl trusts you, which means I no longer need you. Alejandro went still, his eyes locked on Samantha's. In their dark depths, she saw anger, desperation, and something else. Something that made her heart twist painfully in her chest. Now. Now. The anaconda's voice was a low purr. The map, if you please. With his free hand, he held out the ancient parchment to Samantha. She glared at him, defiant even with a gun to her head. I won't help you. The anaconda sighed as if disappointed. Then, with a suddenness that made Samantha's stomach lurch, he pivoted, aiming the gun at Alejandro. No. The word tore from Samantha's throat, raw and desperate. The anaconda's smile was pure serpentine satisfaction. The map, Samantha da? Or, lover boy here dies. Alejandro met her gaze, his own fierce and unyielding. Don't do it, Samantha. Not for me. But she couldn't let him die. Couldn't have his blood on her hands. 
With a leaden heart, she reached out and took the map, the ancient parchment crackling beneath her fingers. The anaconda smile widened. Excellent choice. He gestured to his men who began to melt back into the jungle, dragging a struggling Alejandra with them. The anaconda himself took Samantha's arm in a bruising grip, the muzzle of the gun a cold promise against her ribs. Shall we, my dear? His breath was hot against her ear. El Dorado awaits. As he force-marched her into the waiting shadows, Samantha's mind raced. She had the map, but she also had the key, the secrets locked in her blood and her memory. The Anaconda thought he had won, but the game was far from over. Samantha would play along, bide her time, and when the moment was right, she would strike. For her father, for the truth, and for the man whose dark eyes haunted her, even now. The jungle closed around them, ancient and patient, cradling its secrets close. But Samantha could feel them, whispering on the edge of her consciousness waiting to be unleashed. El Dorado called her, and she would answer. No matter the cost. The jungle grew denser, darker, as the anaconda's men forced Samantha deeper into its heart. The air was thick and heavy, the heat oppressive, but it was the weight of the ancient map in her hand that felt most burdensome. With each step, she could feel the lost city drawing closer, its secrets pulsing like a heartbeat beneath her feet. But at what cost would those secrets be revealed? Her mind raced, spinning with fragments of the past. Her father's amulet around the anaconda's neck. The talk of a jungle love, a hidden child. Pieces of a puzzle she'd never even known existed, now falling into place with sickening clarity. An Alejandro. Her heart clenched, a physical ache in her chest. He was out there somewhere, a prisoner of the anaconda's cruelty. The thought of him suffering, of those dark eyes dimming forever, was a knife twisting in her gut. She had to find a way to save him, to save them all. The anaconda's voice slithered through her thoughts, as insidious as the serpent he was named for. Not much further now, my dear. The lost city awaits. She glared at him over her shoulder, putting all her hate, all her defiance into that single look. You'll never find it without me. The map is useless unless you know how to read it. His chuckle was low and dark. Oh, I'm counting on that, Samantha. Why else would I keep you alive? The casual cruelty in his voice sent a chill down her spine, despite the jungle's suffocating heat. This man, this monster, would stop at nothing to claim El Dorado's treasures. No life was too precious, no cost too high. But he had underestimated Samantha Ray. Underestimated the fire that burned in her blood, the unbreakable spirit she'd inherited from her father. She would play his game, for now. But when the time was right, the jungle thinned ahead, giving way to a vista that stole the breath from Samantha's lungs. A vast canyon stretched before them, its sheer walls plunging into mist-shrouded depths. And there, rising from the center like a mirage shimmering in the heat, was a city. El Dorado. It was exactly as her father's journals had described. Towering pyramids of gleaming gold, streets paved with precious gems, temples adorned with intricate carvings that seemed to move and breathe in the shifting light. A city of legend, of myth, now made real before her disbelieving eyes. The anaconda's men let out a cheer, their voices echoing off the canyon walls. But their leader silenced them with a sharp gesture, his pale eyes fixed hungrily on the golden spires. At last, he breathed. After all these years, he turned to Samantha, his grip on her arm tightening. You've done well, my dear, but your usefulness has come to an end. Cold fear pooled in Samantha's stomach. She'd known this moment would come, known that the anaconda would dispose of her as soon as she led him to the city. But to hear it stated so baldly, to see the casual anticipation of her death in those merciless eyes. You can't, she whispered, hating the tremor in her voice. You still need me. To navigate the city's defenses, to decipher its secrets. I have the map. The anaconda patted the ancient parchment, now safely tucked into his breast pocket. And thanks to your father's amulet, I have the key to reading it. 
he smiled, a slow, cruel curve of his lips. Face it, Samantha. You've outlived your usefulness. He raised his gun, the muzzle cold and implacable against her forehead. Samantha stared down the barrel, her heart pounding a desperate tattoo against her ribs. This was it. The end of the line. She'd failed, failed her father, failed Alejandro, failed herself. The lost city would fall into the anaconda's greedy hands, and the world would never know the truth. She closed her eyes, bracing for the bullet, for the final searing pain. But it never came. Instead, a war cry split the air, fierce and wild. Samantha's eyes flew open just in time to see a figure erupt from the jungle behind them, a figure wielding a spear with deadly precision. Alejandro Dotai. Chaos exploded. The mercenaries scattered, some falling to Alejandro's whirling spear, others fleeing in terror. The anaconda roared, his gun swinging wildly as he tried to track the attacking warrior. Samantha didn't hesitate. With a burst of desperate strength, she wrenched free of the anaconda's grip, slamming her elbow into his solar plexus. He doubled over, wheezing, and she snatched the map from his pocket. Then she was running, flying across the golden bridge that spanned the canyon, Alejandro at her heels. Bullets whizzed past them, the anaconda's furious shouts echoing off the stone. But they didn't stop, didn't slow. They plunged into the city's winding streets, the gleaming buildings rising up to embrace them. At last, gasping for breath, they stumbled to a halt in a small, sheltered plaza. A fountain gurgled at its center, the water clear and sweet. Samantha turned to Alejandro, drinking in the sight of him, battered, bloodied, but alive. Alive and here with her. You came back, she whispered her voice raw with emotion. You saved me. He reached out, his calloused hand cupping her cheek with infinite tenderness. I will always come for you, Samantha. Always. Tears blurred her vision. She leaned into his touch, letting his strength, his warmth, seep into her weary bones. For a moment, the world fell away, the danger, the secrets, the weight of the past. There was only this only them. But the moment couldn't last. The sound of pounding footsteps, of shouted orders, intruded on their fragile peace. The anaconda, closing in. Alejandro's jaw tightened. He drew his knife, the blade gleaming. We have to keep moving. Find the temple, the heart of the city. That's where the answers will be. Samantha nodded, squaring her shoulders. She took his hand, lacing her fingers through his. Together? Together. They plunged into the labyrinthine streets once more. The map clutched tight in Samantha's hand, their hearts beating as one. El Dorado's secrets, beckoned, ancient and powerful, promising revelation, promising closure, dot talk.